Buongiorno, welcome to Autofuel, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews. I'm Thomas and I'm welcoming you to this episode with the Alfa Romeo Giulietta QV, the Quadrifoglio Verde, the top sports version with 240 horsepower. We have the privilege to film this review here at one of my favorite hotels and I think also one of the best hotels in the world. This is the Hotel Lido Palace at Lake Garda and I think it's a good setting here for the Alfa Romeo sports version, especially in this red racing color. So let's look forward to this review with the exterior, interior and of course with a sporty experience. Let's start with the exterior here in the front. Well, I have always loved Alfa Romeo design, this Italian design, especially with the front grille with the vertical lines flowing around, just like the logo size, I think. It's just this typical Alfa Romeo logo and just so beautiful, especially always transporting some kind of sporty feeling already just when looking at it. But then again, there are some special changes here in the QV version, the Quadrifoglio Verde. Um, for example, we got a lot of black elements and these bonds are here also in the low bumper. Um, also in the logo itself, it got this shiny black elements. And then you see the lower part is really huge and totally in black. And this is due to the launch edition. This is even more special. So this one is the launch edition model here of the QV still from last year. Therefore, it is even more aggressive. Actually, it's number 138 of the launch edition models. So it's pretty unique. So let's take a look at the alloys. Usually you get 17 inch from the Seabrill production. Here we got the optional 18 inch and they allow us even a better look on the red brake calipers. You also get from Seabrill production and especially, of course, fitting exactly to the red color of the car. Then we got the Quadrifoglio Verde sign, the four leaf clover. And this is the huge logo telling us there's a lot of horsepower beneath it. By the way, just some outlook beneath the hood here. We got the same engine as in the all new Alfa Romeo 4C, so you can expect a lot of performance there as well. Then, in the side profile, we got carbon mirror covers here and also dark door handles. You get this in the launch edition here as well as in the serial production from the QV version. Especially for the launch edition is that you got the red bumper here, but I think it also looks good when it's just in the vehicle cover. So you see here the frames of the windows are in black here. Usually with the QV version, if it's not the launch edition, you also got this dark chrome package where you got the dark elements on the one side, but also the chrome frame, which I think even looks a little bit more classy than, than it. Well, it wouldn't be the large edition. And then if we continue to the rear. Another carbon fiber element is placed here at the small rear wing. And then we cut a well, quite bulky rear. You know, it's quite powerful. And we've see, uh, we will see it later also when it's dark. I can show you later. Um, this is here the LED signature light here in the rear and well it was one of the first time when this car was introduced in 2010 that this signature light was used in this kind of form. It's kind of like a well like half a snake or something like that but it looks really beautiful. And then here in the QV version we got a massive rear diffuser here. You see it with like four elements in a row and also two exhaust pipes for this tuned engine. Usually when starting just with the Giulietta you get a 1.4 liter engine with 105 horsepower and here in the top sports version you get a 1.8 liter engine with 240 horsepower and well the air it produces it has to go somewhere. And talking about the engine 
we look up beneath the hood. Yes, hydraulic dampers check. We got them, so easy to open. And then it's a nice engine design, especially here also with a red contrast, turbo benzina. Okay, that's clear, I guess. And this engine, it gives us an acceleration from 0 to 100 kilometers in six seconds. I think for a compact car, that's quite feasible. Actually, we got some more horsepower than with the Golf GTI. You know, the Golf GTI 220 or 230 horsepower, here 240 horsepower. But this car in this very version is also a little bit more expensive, at least on paper, than the Golf GTI. As it stands here right now, for example, in Germany, you pay 32,500 euros, maybe with some more extras, 34,000 euros. Whereas the basic Giulietta would start at 20,000 euros. But then you get all the equipment you actually want to have or you wish to have. So we'll also take a look at the interior now. What special equipment is already included here in the Quadrifoglio Verde version? So let's take a look at the interior of this 4.35 meter long compact car. We got special seats here. They are kind of the half bucket seats. They are called the Alfa Romeo. So we have bucket seats element, for example, at the top of the seat. But then again, we got the rather normal seat at the lower seating part. So it's kind of a compromise, but still they look very good, I must say. And I'll also tell you later about when driving, how comfortable actually they are while driving. They offer good shoulder support here in the upper part, of course, and they got some nice details printed or stamped on here at the back part here and also at the uh, below the integrated headrest actually and so they also did some nice Italian handwork there. So look at the details, contrast stitches here in white and green also in this Quadrifoglio Verde color scheme. Then kind of half cut the Alfa Romeo logo stamped in the Alcantara part of the seat. And as I told you at the head restraint here the Giulietta sign also the holes in the seat racing style because you know the seat belt would actually go there in the real racing car it doesn't go here but it's just kind of this design scheme as well first seating impression here it's rather cozy yes because we have a sporty seat and also this bucket style is kind of cozy but i think for tall people i already realize now it's a bit small the seat itself um, especially here in the lower part a lot of space between my knees and the seat and also just from the side i think they're really oriented more on maybe drivers that are 180 or less if you're above 180 like me well might not be the best case in here. The rest of the cockpit, let's look at the steering wheel. We've got wide contrast stitches on the inside. The general steering wheel is quite huge, I must say. And if you remember, maybe the steering wheel from the uh, 147, the predecessor car of this one here before 2010, I think the steering wheel there looked a little bit better because here, this middle part, yes, it does imitate the logo, which is kind of a nice idea. But I think it's a little bit clumsy. I would have liked if it's a little bit slimmer here on the inside. Then it doesn't look that sporty in my opinion. But the steering, well, just how it works actually, I'll go into tempo later on my driving, but I can already tell you that's actually quite good. So it doesn't look that good, but it's, it works quite fine. Then the rest of the cockpit, it's all in dark here, also the seating and everything. This is this racing scheme again. You know, I like it more when it's bright generally, but for the racing cars or racing top sports version, they usually pick the darker colors. We got a quite small central touchscreen here. We got some hotkeys we can use, for example, for the 
for the GPS um, or when I want to go to the media Bluetooth connection works quite well I've tested the mm -hmm. iPhone here here I still got an iPhone 4 by the way yes quite old school but then I can also use the, um, the touchscreen buttons and um, in general well you get along quite well when controlling it but the um, for example if you now go to the map you can see how the map actually looks like Actually, I had a hard time um, controlling everything because sometimes there was some wrong information and also we were led to wrong world. So I can really not recommend this GPS. It's not included even here in the top sports version. You pay about 1,000 euros extra for it. And well, as I said, I cannot really recommend it. But of course, it looks cleaner than you would just attach another um, extra third party GPS here. One option we do not have here is that we don't have the panoramic roof. This one would also be optional for well, also some above 1,000 euros. Actually, I might go for it because you see I got still a lot of headspace, so there would be no problem if I would already have this panoramic roof. Then what else do we have? If we look more to this lower part here, in the quadrifolio verde version, we already got a um, the, the climate control, which is actually split in two zones. So, okay, so the co-driver and driver can do it manually. And well, it's all quite a huge and reminds a little bit of an um, aircraft cockpit atmosphere. The materials used here aren't that high class, I must say, but controlling them feels quite well, better than in most of the other Fiat Corporation models, I must say. Then again, this green and white color screen, screen, uh, scheme here at the automatic shifting lever. This is also optional, you can usually also get the manual transmission, but I think I can just recommend the automatic gearbox more details when driving. And what is very good, I think, we still get a classic handbrake here, traditional handbrake, and I always love when these features are still available manual, because think about when all electronic equipment fails in the car, you could still just break the car with that one and I think every car should, should stick to that one but unfortunately most of the manufacturers don't use it anymore these days. And finally let's take a look at the instruments. You see they got the usual black background but then with a white contrast also Quadrifolio Verde logo. In general they are quite clear and also rather traditional. The middle digital screen actually looks quite cheap. You see it's more reminds of the 90s style or something like that. I would have expected more in that case. And you see the consumption is at 9.6 liters here. It's not actually too much, but also it could be a little bit less, I would say. And then let's take a look at this lower part here, USB, SD card, also available with the Giulietta sign that it says it's a 138 car of this launch edition. And then we got a switch here actually. This was the sport mode. And I could go to the normal mode and also to the eco or winter mode. And this decides how the throttle input is and how the ESC behaves. So in sport we got a faster throttle input and also the gears are actually are kept until higher RPMs. And at the winter mode, for example, I got the more gentle thro uh, throttle input and the EC also controls me well, better, actually better. So let's take a look at the rear compartment. As we have used from the predecessor version, from the 147, the Alfa Romeo, we got the handles here for the rear doors hidden inside here. It's actually a good design element because it still looks like it would be a three-door coupe then. But then let's get inside and there we got some problems if you well, a little bit taller. At least we got a handle here, but then you see, just for my knees, I got the seat as I would be driving here now, and you see it doesn't, well, it doesn't really fit. I could just squeeze my knees in here. But I would really need a smaller driver that I fit in here. For example, in the Golf, you have way more space here. Actually, for the head space here, it still does fit. I got that kind of space above my head. I'm 186 in meters. Maybe if we have with the, the panoramic roof, then it wouldn't fit at all, I think. So if you think about going for adults here in the back, maybe not pick the panoramic roof, but you see already with the knees it gets some problems. You can also move up the head restraint now and test again. Well, it's really not that comfortable here. 
in the rear. Maybe when the co-driver has a seat way more in the front and is also not that big, then I could move over to the second party and then it would actually work also with my knees. But still, that's not really, um, not really that a good solution. I think as a co-driver would be, well, it has to be really small right now here. Then it would actually work. What is nicely done is that the design scheme also with the uh, white and green contrast stitches is also carried over here in the rear compartment. Also with the Alcantara on the inside, you know, really my favorite combination. If you got, for example, artificial leather on the outside and Alcantara on the inside, also is a good combination also for, uh, they always got a good climate, don't stick to the seats in the summer and still not that cold in winter times. That's really nice, but you see, really not that much space here. So that's maybe also the coast of Italian design. And when you look at the trunk, you see it's a nice detail. I can press the Alfa Romeo logo, and then the trunk can be opened. Still, well, it's a trunk of a compact car, so there isn't too much. It's a relatively high loading sill, also quite a big step in here. And also for a compact car, there's, I think, even less space. At least we got a 12 volt supply here. I can use that one actually, maybe. But then in general, you see it's not too much space here. Well, we do have a small uh, ski hatch here. And um, if, I can, if I flip the seats then, then it's actually possible to load through. Let me just check that one here. I can flip the seats here from, the, from this part here, one third. And then for the ski hatch, Hello. This is actually possible, you know. And also, it is possible to go for the complete switch. I can close the ski hatch again. And then you have more space, not in quite even flat area, but at least you can go to IKEA or something like that and uh, buy some small furniture. Let's talk about driving the Alfa Romeo Juliet here, Quadri Folio Verde. First of all, the steering, well, it didn't look that good, but it actually offers a quite direct steering, so nothing to moan about that. Also, I don't have to steer that long, so it always feels quite progressive. I can always keep both hands at the steering wheel, and that's very good for a sporty car, of course. About the engine, we got a quite nice sound here for a compact car. And especially when I go to the sport mode, I can turn the revs higher and then if I then push the throttle, I'm coming to the tunnel now by the way, then we can maybe even better hear it on the inside. Yeah, well actually it's not this kind of roaring sound like from a huge sports car. But just to have some more emotion in everyday driving, I think, or emozioni, as our Italian friends would say, that actually works quite well. And also when the shifting is done with the automatic gearbox, like from second to third gear or something like that, we sometimes hear this small plop sound from the exhaust in the back, and that's always very nice to hear in this kind of car. Then about the riding comfort, if we had quite plain roads now as we have at the moment. It does feel comfortable, yes, and you've got a good contact to the road, very sporty feeling really with the suspension. The car sits 50 millimeters lower, so it's of course stiffer then. But then you have to think about, okay, if you want to go on over some bumps, some holes in the road, then it does feel rather uncomfortable. So you really have to think about how important is a very comfortable ride at all times for you and how plain are the roads you are going on. So if it's just some waves in the road, that's perfectly fine. But again, these small holes and bumps, there it is where this sporty suspension really also has its disadvantages then in this case. The sound insulation is okay as long as you're not driving too fast. On the motorway, I would say, the sound insulation could be better in here. About how comfortable the seats are, 
Actually, I've already told you about in the static interior presentation. It could be better for taller people. I think smaller people would be very fine, also with the half bucket seats here. For taller people, I think it could be better. There is a lumbar support you can also apply to your lower back, but it's very hard to turn it. Um, so there could be an easier solution for that one. What is actually good is that you have this Alcantara on the middle parts of the seats and that offers you good climate comfort when riding that is on actually on the positive side. Then just from the compact size of the car it feels very agile. It's also comparable for example to the Golf GTI and this creates even more riding fun because you have this rather small wheelbase and then you can always turn right left without the car moving too far in either corners and also the car doesn't weigh actually that much so you don't have this uh, this great understeering then that's uh, actually quite feasible as well of course due to the front front wheel drive if you really push the throttle and the road is rather wet then you get a lot of wheel spin in the, at the front tires but in general when the road is dry you'll be fine with that and so this power can also be transported via the front wheels that's quite okay yeah the engine as i said all also placed in the 4c or for the alfa romeo and i think that's also quite good because they can use the same parts and also reduce the costs for both cars and, and also when developing the cars and i think you can really um, do this So let's now really test the sportiness. So very tight corners here now. Pushing me a little bit to the outside, still can keep both hands as a steering wheel. Also going uphill, so all the power of the engine needs to be applied. Good control with the direct steering here. Also some nice sound bits we're hearing. Good contact to the road. In this case it doesn't annoy that it gets a little bit uncomfortable when it's bumpy because I feel the better control of the car here. it's also quite easy to drive because of this small wheelbase almost 180 degrees really fun to drive So let me conclude about this Alfa Romeo Giulietta Quadrifoglio Verde. Actually, I really love the Italian design. I'm still a fan of Alfa Romeo, just as for design, especially with the front. Here in this launch edition, we got this black contrast and well, but I think I would actually prefer the usual chrome package this QV version has, where we got the chrome on the side windows, but still some of the black elements. So, but in general, I think the design is just prevailing and also scores out, for example, a Volkswagen Golf GTI. Then again, on the interior, we also got some nice design elements, but you know, the whole look and feel isn't as good as for Volkswagen, for example. We got some parts which actually look rather cheap, and I think this is actually disappointing here also in the top sports version. I think Alfa Romeo in general uh, really has to work on the look and feel in the interior. Also, we don't have too much space here on the interior. That is actually not good for the everyday um, usability of the car. But in general, just with the size here, you get along quite well if you don't want to transport so many adults at one time. 
Then again, as for the driving, I think I was quite surprised. It's a really good sporty car in this top version here. The steering, although I didn't like the steering wheel itself, the steering itself was quite direct. I had a lot of fun while driving. This engine here, as is also used in the Alfa Romeo 4C, was also very well suitable for the car. A lot of power with the 6 seconds from 0 to 100 kilometers really makes a lot of fun here when driving. Never lacked any RPM and with the automatic gearbox also in the combination. Well, sometimes I had this feeling the clutching out process was a little bit too late. But besides that, especially in the sport mode, always there when you need the power. And also because of this compact size of the car, the suspension was also giving you good feedback on the road. However, you have to think about with this suspension, it's not adaptive, so you won't have this comfortable ride. If it gets really bumpy on the road, it is uncomfortable, and you have to remember that if you're more comfort seeking. So, in general, I think for the price, well, you get the car that looks actually more expensive, but the price just on paper is still a little bit more than with the Golf GTI, and if we compare these competitors, I think for the same price I would still go for the Golf GTI, although I like this exterior here more. So I think the dealer of Alfa Romeo really has to give you some discount that he can keep up with the competition. So that's my conclusion here. I also look forward to your comments on the car here, exterior, interior, and also what I told you about driving and also about price performance. Really look forward because it's the first Alfa Romeo full review we had you now. And well, I'm looking forward also to the comments about this kind of choice and that we fulfilled you wish to show you an Alfa Romeo. And I hope I'll see you at the next Auto Fuel episode here with Thomas.